Charles Bronson in Once Upon a Time in the West is arguably mm-hmm. the coolest performance I've ever seen. The man had a face like a mountain lion, but, um, <laughs> you know, I was a huge admirer of what he achieved in that movie. And I was just trying to bring my inner Bronson to this. Um, man, there, there's so much to get into, but I think I want to start with the fact that, you know, it's right there in the trailer for Prisoners of the Ghost Line. You call this the wildest movie you, you've ever made. And I think in a career filled with some wild movies, why does this one stand out as such? Well, it, it's a bit of a mystery to me how that quote wound up on the poster, <laughs> but um, the reality is I hadn't even made the movie yet. I was mm-hmm. talking about the script and I met with Sonosan in Tokyo and he showed me the drawings. We were originally going to shoot it in, uh, in uh, Mexico and he oh. had some drawings that were kind of reminiscent of the old uh, Caligula movie with uh, McDowell. Um, which I'm not a fan of, but, but, but that I knew that he was going in a direction that was going to be wild. Mm. And it was at the time, the wildest script I'd ever read. Um, but knowing Sonosan and being a fan of his movies like love exposure and Noriko's dinner table, knowing that I call him my warlock of cinema, <laughs> uh, that I was going to be walking in his world. I just wanted to protect his world. It's mm-hmm. not somebody you question. You don't challenge. You just go. Go, man, go. And if he wants me to ride a silly bicycle, I'm going to ride a silly bicycle. I was there to protect his vision. That's mm-hmm. how I saw it. Yeah, well, I mean, it is quite a vision, and it's very clear. I, I think I was curious, and I was going to ask, too, what, what do you, what can you tell me about his vision and how it is brought to life in this movie? Like, what what, what is he working with here and, and trying to bring to the forefront? Well. You know, being that, you know, he has his own style, Mm -hmm. um, I knew that I was going into an abstract space, so to speak, and that I could explore some of my more um, operatic, if you Mm -hmm. will, choices or Western kabuki, if you will, choices in performance style, which I welcomed. Mm -hmm very much welcomed because I had just done, I call him Archangel Michael, his movie Pig, uh-huh. who allowed me to explore a more quiet, I call haiku meditative style of film performance. And I immediately got to jump into the Western Kabuki of Sonosan's vision. So I was like very thankful to and it wasn't unrestrained, and some people may think it is, but it, it was by design thought out in terms of the music. So if I'm reading this script and I'm seeing the word testicle, like, okay, well, that, that'll be fun to really hit out of the park and try to put as many notes into the word. <laughs> With, uh, hit out of the ballpark, literally. Um, <laughs> so... Now, listen, I, I, I was blessed. I was blessed yeah. to work with the Warlock of Cinema, and I was blessed to work with the genius that is Sophia Butella. I mm-hmm. mean, my God. I mean, I, I adore her. I saw her movie Climax. I watched oh it gosh. with her, and she's just, yeah. there isn't anybody better. So I was blessed to work with her and with Sonosan and Bill Mosley, who I loved in all of Rob's movies. <laughs> you know, he's an <laughs> old friend. So, I mean... It really was a treat. You know, not only is Sono a great filmmaker and and an artist, he's also my friend and he's nice. And he invited me to stay and Rico and I to stay at his house in Tokyo. I mean, he's just an all around, you know, good dude. And I, I appreciated that. Yeah. um, There's a separate interview uh, that he did somewhat recently where he's talking about some of your earlier conversations. I know he's mentioned before that he loves Verhoeven's films. Um, I think he said that the two of you had talked about in, in the early stages of this film, spaghetti westerns and that you mentioned charles bronson as an influence i'm wondering what other influences were you bringing into into this well you know know, charles bronson in once upon a time in the west is arguably Mm -hmm. the coolest performance i've ever seen and i was just not that i'm that i'm not i don't look anything like charles bronson (laughs) the man had a face like a mountain lion but um (laughs) You know, I was a huge admirer of what he achieved in that movie. And I was just trying to bring my inner Bronson to this. Mm-hmm. And I, 
you know, Sonosan knew that. And I'd show up on set with my Charles Bronson T-shirt. And I just watched a, a documentary about him. Wow. He, he was not a tall man, which I found shocking. And uh -huh. he looked so command such size on camera but he also was not happy with his career i mean he was just like i'm a disappointment to me hmm. i started to feel really bad even though he's no longer with us but sono san knew that that was where i wanted to go or attempt to go a little bit and so i think that's what brought in the spaghetti western element then he brought in the samurai element which was extremely important to him Mm -hmm. And Tak, my friend Tak, was trying to get me to fight more like a samurai. I said, man, I don't have time. I don't <laughs> have the time. He goes, will you fight more like a boxer? I go, but okay, well, that, then why don't we do that? Why don't you have Hiro be more of a, a, a Western pugilist boxer to talk mm -hmm. samurai style? And that, to me, is interesting. So that became kind of like the mashup effect. Mash mm -hmm. so I had yep. time to do that. That I had time to do. It's, it's really funny to hear you literally say, I don't have the time when that is sort of this motif in the movie in a lot of ways. I mean, they're literally holding back the clock from ticking forward. And, yeah. and I, love, I love that motif. I wondered, is there, does that resonate with you really, in a sense, this idea of wanting to stop time or feeling like time is moving on without you? Not so much, but that's mm. an interesting observation. And certainly, mm -hmm. yes, it is in the movie, clearly, very clearly. What really resonated for me, and these are kind of, I approach these waters with you carefully. <laughs> I think, you know, I grew up reading, my father was a literature professor and he gave me John Hershey's Hiroshima to read when I was 10 years old. My God, to read that at 10, to know that that actually happened. You know, our country has lost its moral ground a few times, but for me, that was a blatant one of them. Yeah. And and I think Hero on some level suggests I su suggested with the line, I am radioactive. I think he on some level was channeling the remorse hmm. about the children and the kid, you know, the women that 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 went through that nightmare. Um, and I think when Sonosan said, I want real tears. That's what I think we were tapping into a little was like. How can I ever, how can Hero ever make amends? Yeah. You know, I, I think that's where, I think there's still a lot of pain about that. And you, sir, I am told, are the man to do the job. A land of no escape. We are not the ones who hold her captive. It's been two days, and still she is missing. 